Well, hello, crime stuffers. I don't even know where to start today. Again, um, I took the I took the other video down voluntarily because uh, I didn't want people to think that I was inciting you to violence. Um, although we're very close to the time, uh, there are huge changes underfoot right now, and you're going to see it. I mean, all you people, it's on like Donkey Kong, guys. Are you seeing all the stuff that's happening? Um, where do we start with the Clinton Foundation? They're being investigated, and the FBI is being investigated for their investigation of the Clinton Foundation, and, and, and. Um, Mueller's going to come back with a big fat nothing burger. Uh, Mueller was Team Trump. I've been telling you Mueller was Team Trump the whole time. He was keeping you, well, not you, uh, most of you guys understood what was happening, but he was keeping the masses, he was keeping the Democrats uh, busy and uh, indicting ham sandwiches and, and so forth. Uh, making it so that, uh, you know, they had every week it was like, oh, he's going to get him now, oh, he's going to impeach him now, and now impeachment has pretty much gone away. Even Nancy Pelosi has said, oh, that's not happening. Um, and uh, we've got great Democrats in now. We've got uh, Ocasio-Cortez in there and this other, I mean, the, the, the imam, and even her name sounds interesting. Um, but the idea being is that uh, these young Democrats are the best thing the Republicans have going because it shows the Democrats for what they are. And uh, Blexit is in full swing. The, uh, the uh, black Americans have finally figured out that, uh, well, first off, the whole story is, is complete bunk. But um, And I'll get to that in a minute, hopefully. But the idea that uh, the Democrats who voted against the Voting Rights Act and who, I mean, the Republican Party was designed to get rid of slavery. I mean, they, it started out as, as an abolitionist movement to get rid of slavery. The Democrats have always fought against the Republicans and uh, have been clever enough to make it seem like, oh, no, it's the Republicans that are the racists and their identity politics and so on. But no, um, between Antifa, and that's pretty much gone away, anti-fascists, I mean, God, it's just so blatantly obvious that uh, Operation Paperclip is in full effect um, when it comes to just exact things that were going on in Germany, right down to the wording, if you can speak German, um, of some of the acts and some of the things that they do uh, is exactly precisely the same because it's just the Third Reich in effect in the United States. you got to take a look at the history of World War II and uh, maybe that didn't go quite the way they told you it did. Um, and, I mean, the whole thing hasn't gone quite, I mean, it's been fake news forever. Uh, let's go back to the Venetians and the Phoenicians, right? The Phoenicians moved into uh, Venice, and from Venice they took over um, much of the European world families and so on. There's basically four great cults uh, that have uh, influence, massive influence over the West. And uh, they and this, they wrote the history for you, and the story is not what you were told. Um, there was already a fine and massive empire here in the United States, and uh, we conquered it. Um, we. <laughs> I won't say we. The United States conquered it. The uh, founding fathers and the... Because um, they had their own idea of what... They, you know, and they start off with a declaration. That's you got to understand trust law. And so they start off with their Declaration of Independence, and then they set up, uh, it, now everything is commerce, right? Uh, the the uh, Romans, uh, through the... Uh, see, we want to say that we're Judeo-Christian, we're actually Egypto-Christian, or maybe Phoenicio-Christian is basically closer to the mark. Um, and the Jews and the Christians are basically just pawns uh, for divide and conquer for these uh, Egyptians and Phoenicians that uh, ruled the old world and now rule the new world. They, um, and the, then see, they got everything backwards. The old world is the new world, the new world is the old world. Public is private, pri private is public. Um, you are, in your private capacity, a uh, man. Uh, in your public capacity, you are uh, as a member of the public, uh, but actually it's private because uh, the corporation is private. Um, you know, that straw man, that all caps thing is uh, is a entity that does commerce, that allows you to do commerce. And see, they've turned everything into commerce. They've converted crime into commerce. They've converted every freaking, every time in your castle, you're good, right? Inside your house, they're supposed to be able to leave you alone. But as soon as you, as so much as send a letter and they're going to tax you, so much as move your body outside your castle onto the public roadway, um, and it's, uh, you know, you are subject to plunder and tax if you don't know what you're doing. 
um, not wearing your seatbelt, where you're on your cell phone, you're not driving the speed limit, you go through a stop sign. Um, so there's now uh, many people that have figured out, wait a minute, I thought I was free to travel. I thought I had a right to travel. Um, so you need to know about birth certificates and you need to know about how uh, you can deport yourself, right? Because driving, quote unquote, is a privilege, but uh, deporting yourself on the public roadways is not a privilege. Travel is not a privilege. Moving from one country to another is not a privilege. And yet they've made it, converted it into a privilege by requiring you to have a passport and a driver's license. Um, if you're driving, you need a license because you're using the road for, for profit. And so um, you, otherwise it would be illegal for you to use the roadways uh, for profit. And um, if you're going to use the road for profit, they want tax on that. But if you're not using the road for profit and you're just traveling, um, they have no right to tax you. And it took uh, like a hundred years for that for you guys to figure that out. Um, the Moors, that, that whole concept of uh, the old world, which is the new world, uh, which is the new world, I'm talking about the Americas, uh, which was the old world, there was already mighty empire here. There was already Africans and Indians and uh, others uh, doing uh, commerce in what we now call the United States or the North American continent, uh, the Mesoamerican continent, Mexico and so forth, and the South American continent. There was huge amount of truck. You guys want to pretend that the oceans were uh, barriers. They were not. They were absolute highways. If you the, the oceans made it easy to move stuff, mountains and roads that was difficult. But uh, oceans, oh, you build yourself a boat and you know how to fish and you know how to desalinize water, which they did. Um, you can travel for days. Uh, we have Celts in New Zealand. We have uh, and they, see they write it on stone. And then what uh, is the job of the Jesuits and others to do uh, is come and get that stone or deface it or. Uh, you know, hide it away in the bowels of the Vatican or other uh, edifices where you can't get to that knowledge. But the idea that our ancestors didn't know each other and that didn't have truck with each other is pretty much destroyed by the fact that the New Zealanders and the Maoris and the Hawaiians and the Easter Islanders all speak the same language. Take a look at how far across uh, the ocean those islands are from each other. Now, you're going to tell me that they couldn't make it from Africa to, uh, you know, to Brazil or from, uh, you know, out uh, the mouth of uh, Atlantis, um, right, the, the, at, uh, see, I'm doing video, so I don't have it in front of me. Gibraltar, the Straits of Gibraltar to uh, the Americas, no big deal. From England to uh, the North American, no, no, I mean, you got islands in between. So you can get from England to Iceland to Greenland to, right? So you have landfall all the way down. Um, and the, the idea is that uh, you had massive amounts of uh, truck between uh, the quote-unquote old world and the new world. And uh, the old world, um, Columbus and a few others were like, wait a minute, these guys are making, the Africans are making all kinds of money down there. Um, and, and they have huge plantations and so forth. Let's go get it. And they did. And then they told you these crazy stories about how, you know, it was just heathens here and there was no organization and that, you know, they're just uh, wandering, meandering tribes. No, they had you know, our constitution, um, you know, we the people, that first thing, that comes from the Iroquois nation. And uh, they had a massive uh, organization and, and understanding of, uh, you know, how to distribute few, food and so forth. Um, and, you know, massive mega plantations and, you know, up in the north in the Great Lakes area, they had mines and so on. Um, but no, they had uh, a, a fairly organized uh, thing going on here before the uh, Europeans ever showed up. And then it was a land grab after they had a huge uh, plague in the area. And I'm not so sure that their that plague wasn't caused by us. Uh, you know, by humans, um, uh, or maybe not humans, but our masters. Uh, and see, that's the other thing. Finally getting to the point where uh, many people have figured out that there are others. They look like us, but they're not like us. Um, and all they had to do is look like us. The Egyptians, uh, the dark-skinned uh, uh, individuals, that, uh, and some of them very dark-skinned individuals with their big, long skulls in uh, Egypt and Phoenicia, and see, the Phoenicians, those were the, 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 from what I'm starting to read, these, they're like the Ferengi. They're like the, I mean, just, you know, they're the ones that gave us the uh, Babylonian money magic and uh, admiralty law and maritime law and salvage law and, and so forth on the high seas. Um, and, you know, it started messing with common law and so on. 
And then understand that in these great cults, uh, if you go back far enough uh, and take a look at, say, the people that uh, are into the pharmaceuticals, um, they were the cults that, that they come down from the cults uh, that uh, studied uh, the, the, the druids and so on, that studied uh, plants and mushrooms and so forth, the mushroom cult. Um, believe it or not, there were, you know, the, between the difference between the mushroom cult, the fish cult, <laughs> right? Um, but the idea is that uh, there were uh, several different cults, uh, four that I can say, and they are fiercely guarding their bloodlines to this day. Um, and they came down with, uh, and where those cults, and see, there's still more study. I haven't read everything, and I haven't gotten uh, through everything. But the idea being is that it looks like uh, others uh, came here and uh, had better technology, had better, um, and they've been in contact with us uh, coming down from the sky. Uh, and it's in, the, it's in the books. It's, it's, it's written there. Okay? And, and again, if you take a look at all of our history and so forth, uh, Moses, for example, uh, Moses came down with the law. We didn't come up with our own law, right? We were given the law by this other, this burning bush, by this other entity, by this other intelligence. Gave us the law, gave us our morality, gave us our language, for example. Um, and it's and every culture, that's the case, right? Come down from the mountain or they, wherever, it, however the story goes, right? Lady in the lake, handing out swords, whatever it is. Um, but the idea is that uh, the uh, law and our uh, knowledge of language and so forth and writing always seems to have come from the others. The gods gave it to us. These others gave it to us. When you start to realize, uh, we might just not be the smartest thing going. We not, might not be the, the uh, pinnacle of, <laughs> to say the least, of evolution as we're killing each other in mass in, you know, organized armies, we put on costumes and murder each other um, at the behest of these others. And then these others make money off of the whole thing. And like I said, the others are not guarding the prisons. Uh, we are. Uh, neither are they stopping us. Neither are they sitting in the halls of government making the boring decisions that, of governance. All they do is reap uh, money uh, from the process. They have set up a system to extract wealth from the masses so that they don't have to work while they're here. They don't have to do anything while they're here. They just uh, enjoy themselves uh, flying around on private jets, uh, from, you know, sunning themselves on yachts and eating the best food, fucking the best women, so on. They have a thing for our women. Um, absolutely, the, for the female of this of this species, they uh, have figured out how to make it comely and uh, pleasing to their eye. It's also pleasing to our eye. Uh, and, uh, you know, sex slaves and have been the case forever. Um, they've also messed with our minds when it comes to the age of majority. Um, the best age for your children to have children is when they're children. I hate to say it, when they're what, what we consider children. 15, 16, 17. Um, this is the most fertile, most... Um, see, but they're not even done maturing at this age. But uh, we can start having children. Uh, at this age, for sure. And in the old days, uh, back in the day, uh, they understood that 13, 14, 15, uh, they started marrying off their progeny and, and encouraging them to have sex and have children. And then have many, not just one or two. Uh, if you look at all the uh, quote-unquote big-name families uh, in those 13 bloodlines, or even uh, the politicians and so forth, look at how many kids they have. Right? Because they can afford them, for one thing. But um, they've always uh, managed to have five, six kids, right? more than that. And a lot of times, because of their sick, disgusting beliefs, they'll sacrifice the first one. I mean, ugh, never mind if it's a boy or a girl. I mean, just what firstborn they sacrifice to their God. Because these people are fiercely religious, like beyond your ability to understand their comprehend religion. And they take it very seriously. And see, they understand that coming up here, we have the new year coming up. It is, what is this? This is... Uh, March uh, 19th, as I make this. So uh, the new year is coming up uh, on the 21st. I mean, doesn't it make sense? This is the first day of spring, and the year starts over again, and you get a procession uh, that you can, many people, you know, sidereal and astral theology and so forth, through that. that's a good thing to understand, uh, and get in sync with the seasons. Um, so it begins now. 
this is the end of the year, not uh, December 25th, not Saturnella, not the magical holidays that they've given you where they put winter, I mean, they put the beginning of the year in the middle of winter, uh, or, well, the, just after winter. Um, the spring is the beginning of the year. And that's the thing. You guys look at your calendar. I mean, every fucking thing. Uh, your calendar. Where'd that come from? And how come, uh, you know, you start to understand why there's 12 months and why there's 52 weeks and why each week has seven days and, and, and. Um, but the idea being is that uh, they, the, the astrotheology and a lot of this occulted knowledge, it's just marking time. It's, there's nothing mystical or, or you know, because a cult comes with all of these uh, connotations where, you know, devils and demons or, you know, occult is magic or occult is wrong or occult is evil. Occult just means hidden. And they hid from you even the calendar that you're that you deal with, right? And the days of the week, what do they mean, right? The day of the sun, the day of the moon, the day of Saturn, and so on. Um, every day has meaning. Uh, every week used to have meaning, and then every month, of course, had meaning. Um, but the beginning of the year, uh, the, you know, Pisces ends, Aquarius begins, and again we begin to process through the equinox in as above, so below, in the twelve-month cycle, and then in the larger cycle of years. Um, where there are 12 uh, big months, <laughs> right? And the whole thing is, is uh, 360 times 72, um, and 72 was supposed to be, you know, what they decided for us will be a lifetime, right? Three score and 12. Um, 72 years on the average for you, uh, for us, whereas they might live quite a bit longer than that. But if all you do is get one degree in a 360-degree procession, um, yeah, very quickly you forget. And see, this is another thing when we talk about how quickly we forget. Um, how many of you know anything that happened before the United States? I mean, does your family predate the United States? Yes, it does, but most of you can't uh, recite your genealogy more than a couple of hundred years. That's how you know you're a conquered people. That's how you know um, they've got this. Because uh, if you understood where you came from, uh, you can understand where you're going, but they have control of that too. And uh, what they've done is enslave uh, an entire populace so that in the United States, the most powerful nation in the world, you guys have no idea about your history for the most part. You have no idea how long you've been here. You can't, uh, 1776, you can't even go back that far. Um, and that's by design. And those people that uh, write the history books and told you what happened uh, might not have been telling you the truth. Um, and this, that's one, and after 12 years of indoctrination, very difficult for you to, to, uh, for you to break those chains. But, uh, history is not what you think. And like I said, you've got to go back, go back, back in time to the Phoenicians, to the Egyptians and take a look. And they understood very clearly, especially Obama is the most plain of all of it, um, where all he has to do is look a little bit like you or like one of you or the least of you. And now, um, you're fooled. Right? If you look like this, well, then must be, you know, one of the oppressed, right? <laughs> it must be one of us. Uh, but uh, that guy, if you take a look at the eight years that he was in office, look at all the stuff that he got done for the deep state or for the elite or for the uh, cabal, right? And then understand, cabal and alliance, that's the same bird, right? Two different, two different wings on the same bird. Um, I am officially in the uh, Trump supporter camp. I didn't vote for him and I won't vote for him. But I see what he's trying to do, and but it, that doesn't mean that he's a good guy. That doesn't mean that he's on my team, that, right? He's the enemy of my enemy, and what he uh, has done and and continues to do is uh, listen to what he had to say. Uh, go back and watch David Letterman uh, interviews. I should put a bunch of those down here. The guy is speaking the same as he did back then, right? It's the same Trump that you had when he was on. Uh, reality TV and the same uh, Trump you had when he was uh, doing interviews on Letterman and Late Night and so forth, long before he was talking about being president. Um, it's the same guy. He wants to put America first. He wants to put everybody back to work. If everybody goes back to work, uh, that's more taxes and fees for the, for the, uh, for the elite. Uh, wants to stop the endless wars. Uh, that's nice. Um, so that's good. But I mean, they mean to govern. They mean to govern us. But they're not. I mean, take a look at your religions and take a look at your uh, your uh, political divisions. Uh, are they talking about or you know your, your 
your basically basic political parties, Republican, Democrat, whatever it is, labor and, and conservatives or whatever. Um, are they talking about turning this planet into a lovely utopia? Uh, no. <laughs> Putting everybody back to work. And uh, are they gonna build? Are we gonna build cars now? Finally, that don't pollute. No. Are we gonna uh, release free energy on the masses so that we can uh, free up the uh, creativity of the planet? Uh, no. I have no issue, by the way, with uh, this. Uh, uh, what is it? Basic income. Everybody gets a thousand dollars a month. Great. I don't think uh, like the conservatives do. I think that if you got a thousand dollars a month, you'd see a lot of artists and you'd see a lot of musicians and you'd see a lot of people uh, release their creativity because they weren't worried about rent and food, and they'd have at least the basic subsistence to be able to, uh, you know, uh, live so that they could create, because most people want to create. Now, are there going to be people that sit on their ass, take drugs, and play video games? I'm sure <laughs> there's going to be a large portion of the society that does that, uh, because that's what they've been programmed to do. But there'll be a lot of people, a lot of people, that'll start their own business, that'll finally do what they wanted to do and so forth, if they got that $1,000 a month. Um, overall, I think it would be uh, just as good as spending $1,000 a minute on war in the Middle East. Um, we've been at war forever. We always have money for war. We always have money for battleships. We always have money for planes that can't even fly. Uh, what do we spend? $350, 350 uh, billion with a B on uh, this one bomber, and it can't even fly in the rain. Was it the F-35 or whatever it is? Um, but, you know, I was, uh, and I, believe me, I'm not a big fan of uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but at the same time, and, and especially her green plan is ridiculous, I mean, just, I'm not going to pay it any more homage than that. She doesn't even get, I'm not going to argue against it, it's just so fucking pathetic. But the idea of being, right, let's go back to horses. Uh, anyway, but the idea um, that uh, we could have free energy and a uh, stipend for everybody on the planet, oh, what kind of creativity would be released then? I have no issue with any of that. Is it going to happen? I doubt it severely, but um, why not? Uh, $70 billion uh, in her one plan to uh, educate and, and uh, feed people. We wasted more, uh, more, more money on that than on one bomber. So why can't we... Uh, "Quote unquote," waste the money on uh, the human resource, and maybe who knows out of that what would what we might get out of that, what kind of medicine we might get out of that, or what kind of who knows. Like I said, uh, inventors being able to invent uh, without having to worry about food, um, and certainly, uh, I mean, I can see all kinds of good things coming out of that if uh, we wanted to go that way. But the idea is we never will. <laughs> so I don't know why we're talking about it because there's no way. Uh, too many of you have been programmed to think that, that you got to work. You can't just have free money handed to you. Um, and even though that we have this crazy, ridiculous system now that uh, basically just aggregates wealth from the many into the hands of the few uh, through your court system. Uh, you are educated so that you don't know anything about commerce, so that you can't write your own bonds, so that you can't write promissory notes uh, that work, uh, so that you can't access trust. Because, again, understand... Uh, they've got all the money. They've had all the money for thousands of years. They print the fucking money, right? And if you figure out the law, as many of uh, these people have figured out, they just change the law, right? So anybody that tells you that they understand the law, you understand it for the moment, even if you do, and they probably don't, but even if you do, you only understand it for the moment because as soon as the masses start using it for, to their benefit, they'll change the law. That's how it works. Uh, so as several of these guys figured out that, you know, what they were doing and worked a few years ago doesn't work anymore because the law has changed because they don't want you to be able to write your own bonds. They don't want you to be able to uh, lean them. They don't want you to be a state citizen. They don't want you to understand your capacity under the law. Um, they don't want you to be able to do any fucking thing without their permission. They want control. They want absolute control, Right. You have to ask permission, and that annoys the hell out of some people. But the idea being is that they've already got all the money, so get it out of your head that, that, that it's about money. Like, in the Middle East, it's about oil and money. Yeah, dollar Gemini and so forth, I'll give you that. But at the same time, uh, understand, my friends, that for you know, since Roman times, they own all the land. They own all the corporations. They have all the money. They already have it all, right? Their kids already have uh, a silver spoon in their mouth, and they will never need to work unless they want them to work. They never need to serve in the military unless they're trying to get you to, you know, 
serve in the military, so they'll put their kids in there. So it'll, you know, monkey see, monkey do, royal family. Uh, just ridiculous. But, you know, he got to fly, learn how to fly helicopters. That's fun. Uh, but the point being is that um, they already have all the money. So if they have all the money, it's about something else. And what it is is about power, the ability to control you. Um, they just chuckle when you dye your hair blue and you're overweight and unhappy. Um, because lucre, they, uh, what they're doing is making an entire generation, make an entire segment of people, an entire class of people unhappy. Right? Uh, if you guys are smiling and laughing and uh, being even patriotic, I have an issue with the patriotism that's being shown by some, but um, at the same time, if you're uh, about the ideals of uh, family, God, country, you know, doing the right thing, being uh, upright and bright and upstanding, being, uh, you know, you know, all the things that come with the American dream that you have to be asleep to believe. But, but those are good things, right? Those are high ideals. The idea that you're self-reliant, the idea that you take care of your own, the idea that the strong protect the weak, the idea that, uh, you know, uh, through uh, innovation and hard work, you can get ahead. Um, it's not necessarily true. But at the same time, uh, those are good ideas, uh, and those are a good way to live, right? Where you are uh, upright and, you know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't murder. What's wrong with that? <laughs> don't have a problem with that. Uh, but the idea being is that uh, a lot of times you take it too far, and then you become a little over patriotic, and now you decide that, well, our way of life is the best way of life, so we need to go over there, and uh, they can get you to do uh, untoward and unkind things uh, in your patriotism when you, you know, those Muslims or those gooks or those whoever the hell it is that get you to dehumanize your enemy, um, dehumanize others on the planet, and then you'll do atrocious things in the, you know, service of high ideals. It's dastardly. Uh, because I know lots of uh, good boys that found out too late that maybe they weren't the good guys, right? Uh, after uh, one too many see witnessing the disgusting things that happened during the war to women and children and animals and and towns and so forth, right? Where we, we know it was a lovely bustling marketplace when we walked in there, and now it's the desolation and murder and blood. Um, all because our way of life is better than the way, their way of life, or whatever it is, or we're going to go kill bad guys, or whatever they've got your mind. Right? Once they've got your mind, they can get you to do anything. And what you need to understand is you need to free your own mind and uh, make your own decisions and uh, take care of your own. Take care of your own kids. Take care of your own parents. Take care of your own. And once you've taken care of your own, and that means food, clothes, sheltered, um, they're happy and healthy, they're mentally happy and healthy, uh, then maybe you can take a look at, hey, look, we're doing uh, this. Maybe you want to be like this too. But you don't force them, right? That's the voluntarism, right? I am a voluntarist, but at the same time, uh, that whole non-aggression principle, nonsense. We never would have had a nation if our, if our founding fathers were all about non-aggression. And I know lots of libertarians that hide behind the non-aggression principle because uh, when there's killing that needs doing, uh, none of you will do the killing. See, and that's why I had to take down that other video because I'm not... Uh, inciting you to violence. I'm not telling you that because most of you can't make the judgment. Most of you can't make the call. Most of you uh, will stand aside and look while uh, they just damage your children with vaccines while, right, and make the most ridiculous and atrocious excuses. And we'll talk about vaccines for just a second here. Let me, let me uh, digress. Um, we've had two great stories and I'll put them down below. Uh, one is uh, there's a rather wealthy school where uh, all the kids that opted out of getting the vaccine, none of them got whooping cough. All the kids that had the vaccine, all of them got whooping cough. So whooping cough. So the vaccinated kids got whooping cough, and then there was only like 30 of them. Uh, but I mean, the kids that decided not to get vaccinated and did their e exemption, none of those kids got whooping cough. All the kids that uh, uh, were vaccinated, and all the kids in that school that got whooping cough had been vaccinated. Okay. Um, now let's move on to, uh, and see what you guys don't understand is that a lot of these diseases, uh, they are destroying your immune system with these vaccines. Uh, these were rites of passage as you got uh, older for your immune system, mumps, measles. Measles protects you against cancer, by the way. They're trying to figure out, wait a minute, you, you inject the cancer virus with measles and uh, the measles destroys the cancer. Mm. Uh, Anyway, and in the generation before mine, everybody got measles. My mother got measles. My grandmother got measles. My uncle got measles. Everybody got measles. Everybody. Nobody died. Right? You get measles. And then, lo and behold, the cancer rates were lower back then. 
uh, mumps. I got vaccinated for mumps and then I got mumps and I remember my mom being very pissed off about it because she was a uh, public school teacher and when she didn't have anybody to watch me, that means that she had to stay home from school, which means she didn't get paid, which means she lost money when I was sick. So she had vaccinated me uh, because she believed lies uh, in order so that she wouldn't have to stay home with me. And sure enough, I got mumps and got the full on chubby cheeks, the whole nine yards. Now I'm immune, right? The vaccine didn't uh, immunize me. Getting mumps did because um, I have since been around kids that have mumps because of the profession that I'm in. No issue. Not even a sore throat. Nothing. Um, same thing, chicken pox, right? I got chicken pox because everybody in my generation got chicken pox. It was another rite of passage. And now I'm around, I don't have shingles and I get around people that have chicken pox. No issue, right? And it's pretty rare. Like it's very, very rare. But uh, there have been a few homeschoolers that wanted to give their kids chicken pox and uh, so that they would have it naturally instead of getting the vaccination so that they don't get the mercury and the, and the aluminum and the squalene and the God polysorbates and God knows what else they put in those vaccines. Um, turning out that some of those vaccines also had parasites in them. Uh, but anyways, they just want the virus. They just want the kid to get uh, chicken pox. Uh, and then, lo and behold, you're immune to many things once you get chicken pox. Um, and I've been around uh, children that had chicken pox and around the clothes and the suckers and stuff like that that they were passing around to give the kids chicken pox. No issue. Never got it. Um, because I'm immune, right? I have a strong immune system. Uh, that immune system, that's strong, is also going to be strong against cancer, right? They vax you up and give you all of these artificial adjuncts, and uh, it actually weakens your immune system. And in a lot of cases, uh, you get the disease anyway, but you get the disease with uh, now all the stuff that they've injected into you. And make no mistake, tetanus and other things, you can get rid of many of those uh, problems with uh, uh, this stuff is iodine. Uh, this stuff is uh, CBD oil, legal in every state. By the way, this is a legal kind. This is not full extract cannabis oil. This does not have any THC in it. And I don't have any silver. I should have some silver, but I don't. Anyway, um, sovereign silver. Do I not have any? No, I do not have any. Um, but the idea being is that uh, with those things, it, pretty much all the modern diseases can be uh, managed and taken care of. Because are you going to, like, what they try to do is is uh, pad everything, right? So that your kid never gets sick, never gets hurt, never, right? And that's the idea that they're selling you is that uh, you take these vaccines and your kids will, or you give these kids vaccines and uh, your kids will not have to suffer with chicken pox or mumps or measles or whatever it is. Um, sorry, part of being a human is uh, while you're in this density, third density is we are subject to the body and the body is subject to parasite and subject to disease. Um, you can mitigate these with uh, the things that I'm talking about. Oh, here's the other one. This is the stuff right here. People are starting to figure out black seed oil. Right? I'm a, I was ahead of my time. I've been taking this for years now. And people are starting to figure out, wait a minute, kids are coming out of autism using this and just this. Uh, kids are, I mean, they're having using this as the carrier for the C60. And that's another thing you should find out about C60. Um, uh, lowering your oxidative stress is hugely important. So protandum and other uh, things like that that knock your oxidative stress down. Um, that's one of my secrets, right? I've got 55 years on this mug and uh, most people don't peg me for 55. Um, why? Because I don't have the gray, right? I mean, I grow this out just to show you I don't have the gray. Right? Most of my friends do. Um, I'm definitely getting gray. I've got a little bit here and, and, and uh, you know, on the temples on both sides, uh, just a little. But, uh, you know, you can't stop aging, but you can slow it down. And it's not, for me, it's n by far, I'm past the point where I'm uh, worried about the vanity, <laughs> the way I look. Uh, it's the way I feel. It's the hell. It's being able to get out of bed. It's being able to run around with my kids if I want to. It's being able to go to the beach and surf if I want to. It's being able to climb mountains if I want to. Um, all of this is an issue and then, uh, you know, be able to do it. And then the next day not feel like hell. Um, I mean, I'll definitely feel it the next day because after 55 years, you, you're going to feel it. It's not like being a kid anymore, but I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I, I, one day of recovery or a few hours of recovery and I'm good. And I usually don't, uh, overdo it in the first place because I have, uh, various adjuncts and sovereign silver. Uh, I mean that, and that absolutely, um, a few drops under your tongue takes care of most things. We've had uh, flus and diseases because we live in Hawaii and the tourists come here and the diseases enjoy taking vacations to Hawaii just as much as everybody else. Uh, so they come on the uh, in and on the tourists 
and then the tourists give it to uh, the people that work in the hotels. The people that work in the hotels have kids that work uh, that uh, go to schools here. The kids give them to each other, and eventually it makes it into the communities and finds its way uh, back home to me or to others. Um, for the most part, I don't get sick. Right? I mean, I was just talking to another lady where she's fully into Chinese herbs and and uh, other uh, modern things, the black seed oil and a few other things um, that she does and teas and so on. Um, she got sick for three days. I got sick for 10 days. This is the first time I've been sick uh, like that for, you know, I'll get a three day cold or, you know, I, I, you know, get down for a, a little bit, but to have one that actually is the three days to have it, three days to get over it and, you know, th what is it? Three days to catch it, three days to have it and three days to get over it. That's nine days. But I had a 10 day uh, bout where it was bad. And uh, the re the, as soon as I started taking the black seed oil, because I had run out of black seed oil, uh, and uh, doing the silver, boom, gone. Right? But I mean, they, instantly. And I know people that they call it the forever cold because, you know, three weeks, four weeks later, they still have it. Or they think they just got rid of it and then they have a relapse, right? Because they uh, feel better and then they go out and fool around and so forth. And then uh, they weren't better and then they get sick um, or, you know, get uh, relapse and, you know, starts in the head, behind the eyes, gets down to the throat, and then gets in the lungs. So it takes you know, a while for it to go through. Another thing that you can do uh, for uh, colds and flu and so forth, peroxide in the ears. Just lay on your side, put it in there, it'll foam and itch and fizz, and then when it stops completely, I mean, when there's no, when you can't hear anything, flip over and do the other side. The whole process takes about an hour, 20 to 30 minutes a side. Um, that will make a huge difference also. Um, but like I said, the sovereign silver and the black seed oil, uh, two best things you can do quickly and easily for your health, uh, when it comes to beating off these flus and colds, uh, flu shot, not so much <laughs> simple as that. And then the other one, if you can get full extract, uh, uh, CBD, uh, that also builds your immune system, uh, knocks out cancer, um, works on all kinds of stuff, cerebral palsy, uh, you've got the shakes and so forth. Um, turns out a lot of people, um, the reason why they have shakes is because the intercannabinoid system uh, is bereft of cannabinoids. And uh, once uh, all of those receptors are empty, you begin to get the shakes. Uh, and you'll, you, it's proven now more than a few times. And a lot of these guys, a couple of puffs or taking the oil, and almost instantly they get better because those receptors get the cannabinoids they need and the shakes stop, um, the stuttering stops, etc. Um, see, they had everything turned around. They had everything twisted where they were trying to make you think that, you know, it's, it's not, it's essential, right? And they had made it illegal. Unbelievable. And they got away with it. So you had a whole generation suffering when they didn't need to suffer. And see, they, why do they want you suffering? because the gods that they pray to eat that lucre, and the others that they pray to. And again, uh, starting to figure out that there might be others, right? this, this whole thing. Have I ever met another? Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> to, to, to be frank. Um, I can't say one way or the other. I'm pretty sure not. But um, the fact that they exist mathematically, it's, it's, you can't miss it. Uh, if there's four trillion uh, galaxies out there at latest count, trillion with a T, trillion thousands of billions, and then each billion is thousands of millions. Um, and then uh, we're looking at like four and yeah, around there, 40% have uh, water worlds or wet worlds or worlds that we that we would consider could support life. See, because we, all we know about is life that is water-based, carbon-based, but um, in an infinite universe, I'm pretty sure that carbon water-based life forms are not the only kind of quote-unquote life forms or uh, that there is. Further, um, as I do more study, uh, in the, elect the visible light is only a small sliver of uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. And of that small sliver, we only see 0.035%, right? That's all the faculty that we have for uh, perceiving uh, visible light. And visible light is, uh, you know, because that goes out to infrared and on the one end and uh, ultraviolet on the other. Um, it gets to ultraviolet, we can't see it. It gets to infrared, we can't see that. Uh, are there creatures that live in uh, and that vibrate at that level that are intelligent and can manipulate matter and so forth, kind of sort of the way we do? Uh, I'm going to say probably yes. Um, have I ever seen one? Well, no, because I don't have the faculties to see one. But uh, do they exist? I'm pretty sure they exist. And they could be standing right next to you and you wouldn't know because you can't perceive them because they don't vibrate in a, vibrate in a way that you can perceive. Right? You can't hear them. You can't smell them. You can't see them. 
But that, does that mean that they're not there? Uh, and at the other, on the other hand, I agree with people that say, well, then if you can't prove they exist, how do you know they exist? Excellent. Uh, I, I have no argument there. Uh, but mathematically, the, the idea that there are others, uh, there have to be others. Okay, now, um, the way to contact these others and be able to communicate with these others uh, is occulted. And uh, we call that magic, or we call that, uh, you know, white magic or dark magic or black magic or, you know, it's not normal. So, um, you know, there's a taboo on it. And using mushrooms or uh, other plants to be able to get into a state where you can see these others. And now there are huge cults of people and many Americans in the Western society that have gone down to... Uh, South America and other places where they have these rituals and um, they all observe the same things at the same time, right? They're not just dreaming and having a trip. They have had their consciousness shifted. They have had their ability to perceive shifted and all of them the same way at the same time. So now they see others together as a group. I've heard of this. I've never experienced this, but I've now heard of this uh, firsthand. Uh, more than once. I was over at a, a, a couple of people's houses now, um, and uh, interesting, their, their experiences are very similar. But anyway, over for tea, and or kombucha, actually, and, uh, you know, hippie food, and uh, heard about their experiences while they were down in South America. And lo and behold, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. I hear it from different people, and they didn't all do the same trip as it was, you know, go on the same uh, excursion. Uh, these are different people that have done things at different times. And um, in the past, most of them weren't willing to talk about it because that's crazy talk, right? They did ayahuasca or they did DMT and so forth, and they had shared experience with others. Um, but it's starting to permeate into the consciousness now, and it's coming back to the West that, oh, yeah, uh, this is possible. And not only possible, it happens. And uh, you can do it, too. If you and, and, again, this is not recreation, <laughs> my friends, as uh, several of them have said. Uh, you want to, be, in one case, the guy was so pure because he only eats, like, raw vegetables is basically his diet. I mean, literally, he doesn't eat meat, he doesn't eat anything dead, uh, he only eats plants, um, period. No processed food, no anything, he eats plants. Uh, so, I mean, he'll eat cooked rice and so forth, but for the most part, it's, uh, you know, Broccoli off the plant, you know, cauliflower off the plant, cabbage, it, uh, lettuce, etc. I mean, just raw vegetables. Um, wheatgrass that he's pressed and so forth. I mean, uh, but he does not eat anything. Uh, like, he certainly isn't going to eat chicken cacciatore. Or he's, you know what I mean? He's not eating steak hollandaise. It's not happening. Um, because he won't eat the flesh of an animal. Um, but anyway, when he did the ayahuasca, he didn't puke and shit and have all the things that happened to most people. But most everyone I've talked to, other than that one guy, um, it was not a pleasant experience getting to the other, that altered state because you wind up heaving and you wind up diarrhea and, you, I mean, like, you clear out your body and then your mind can function. Um, and some of them, uh, like this one girl was saying, it's like she thought she was going to die. She was heaving so badly. Um, at retching so badly, and it was coming out both ends for a little while there, right? And she's in the jungle, so it's not like she has a nice porcelain toilet to be flushing things, right? So, ugh. Anyway, um, and then her experience was very, very interesting. Uh, and like I said, shared experience, and I've heard this now from several people where they all saw the same quote-unquote entity, and they had a shaman that was able to uh, be their intermediary and so forth, and then they, you know, walking through the jungle in the, in the dead of night, and they can see, because the plants, they can see the auras of the plants, and, uh, you know, and it's an effect that only lasted for mm, about eight hours, and then as it was wearing off, they were so sad, right, <laughs> because they can feel the, that state going away, and now um, they can't see in the dark anymore, and they can't and have uh, interaction with others. And then, uh, like I said, it's the same experience for many of them. And I'm interested to do this. Actually, I'm going to go explore. And how dare the government of the United States, and how dare any of you, uh, because of your religion or whatever it is, tell me or others that we can't explore our own consciousness? That what What is this thing that we've got going on here? I don't know. <laughs> I'll make it plain. Um, I have some ideas. And like I said, mathematics and reading uh, has helped me. But at the same time, um, certainly I don't, I'm certainly not the arbiter of truth. Uh, you need to get down on your own path and figure out what, what's what. Um, and speaking of that, you know, going down pathways, 
I have uh, run into some very interesting individuals who uh, seem to have figured out that, yeah, you can write your own contracts once you know what's going on, but you better not start writing your own contracts and doing liens and stuff like that until you've got your ducks in a row and uh, you've done your paperwork and you've informed various authorities that, oh, yeah, I'm, I, uh, not only am I getting off the plantation, I'm going to become like you. Um, but there's paperwork that needs to be done. Right? There's uh, auth uh, authentication of birth certificates. There's uh, notices that uh, you need to inform people that, oh, wait a minute, I'm a state citizen. I'm not a U.S. citizen. Um, and I'm doing it because of this, right? So you need to, right, because uh, I can read it to you, but there's a part that says, well, because we don't uh, give you this remedy, this is your remedy, right? This is how you get the remedy that you're supposed to get. Um, so understand what your remedies are. And then understand, once, as I've said before, once you figure out your remedy, uh, they'll probably change the law, right? Once, I mean, so what works for you now may not work for you in the future. And what worked for guys, if you're watching YouTube videos or you're get information that's like, you know, 10 years old, uh, work, work 10 years ago might not work today because uh, the powers that be may have changed the laws or may have made some subtle differences so that they can trap you because, oh, what do they want? Ooh, if they can get you in prison, even better, right? Although I've heard from some people that they'd rather kill you than put you in prison because if you go to prison, you may educate others, right? Because what do they have? Nothing but time on their hands to go down to the uh, library and read because it's all there. It's all, <laughs> it's all in book form uh, in the statutes and in the laws and so forth. Um, you just have to know where to look and how to interpret, and which means that you need to know what the words mean. This is another thing that it amuses me uh, greatly, is that people are like, oh, there's all these different interpretations of the Bible, there's all these different interpretations depending on how you interpret certain words. Yes, that was the case. Um, those are the ciphers. Um, the idea was you have a passage in the Bible. Okay, depending on how you interpret the words, it means this. If you interpret the words a different way, it means that. So you have a cipher for the living God. You have a cipher that um, we're talking about physics. You have a cipher that we're talking about medicine. You have a cipher that we're talking about, right? And this was the cleverness of those that wrote these passages, is that, yes, you can uh, read uh, one passage, you know, nine different ways and get nine different meanings out of it. Um and then you have to know how to read the passages, and then there's a code for that, and what order to put the passages in, so that you, right? Anyway, but the idea is that uh, there that this book down here uh, was written by those that thought it was clever to be able to have multiple uh, meanings for words and multiple meanings for the passages, um, so that these passages meant different things. Just like I said, in Hawaii, uh, they're not singing about a beautiful beach and the waves, they're singing about sex, right? They're not singing about a waterfall and, you know, a beautiful pool and, and the clouds in the sky and so forth. They're singing about a beautiful woman, uh, Wahini Ilakea, right? They're, they're not they're just singing about uh, the flowers on the cliffs of Molokai. That's not exactly what the song is about. Um, but the idea is that you have multiple meanings for uh, each word and each paragraph, and then you put them in the right order, and you get a whole new thing out of your Bible. Um, and that's above my pay grade again. You can, there's other people that will give you some of that. Um, but, or just the idea, like right now, uh, the new year is coming. Right? This is uh, spring. And then spring, summer, right? <laughs> summer is going to be hot this year. And then while it's hot in the summertime, they're going to try and make you forget that we just had one of the coldest winters ever. And that uh, their climate change story is complete. And okay, there is climate change. So that part is not bullshit. But the global warming part of it is complete bullshit. And uh, I think Greg Hunter just had this guy on it saying, oh, the, the military is using machines to keep it cold or just over the North American continent. Motherfuckers, it is cold everywhere on this planet. Yeah, Australia just had the coldest, and then they just went into a hot summer, and they try to make you forget that they had all that snow and cold and so forth. Um, same thing, they're going to try and make you forget that you had 26 feet of snow in California. Um, that was one of the signs, though, I will say, from uh, numerous people is that when California turned wet, you would know that uh, we're winning. This is the thing. And when I say we, not me, I mean the guys that were telling me this, is that when you see California, these guys, when you see California uh, getting, you know, the droughts over and, uh, you know, it's getting the weather that they're supposed to get, and when you start seeing the, the green in the desert, that's when you know that, uh, that uh, the cabal is uh, the fight that's going on in the cabal between the alliance and the, right? Because what you have is in that cabal, you have uh, those four cults, um, members and descendants of those four cults fighting with each other the way they've always fought with each other. But this time it's a little more real, right? Usually they fight, but they're on the same side and their, their goals are very similar. 
Um, but the Trump guys, uh, the guys that put Trump up as the figurehead, these so-called white hats, uh, and I put this in that other video that I took down, a lot of those guys are culpable. A lot of those guys are guilty of atrocious things. But they're trying to come clean because some of the things that they did. And see, I don't want to be confused. I don't want you to be confused thinking, oh, we're going to give these guys a pass. Or, oh, I'm the 100 monkeys talking about, uh, you know, uh, letting them go. No, 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 no. Um, many people must swing from ropes. Many, many people are going to swing from ropes. And I don't know how many of you guys are going to be able to handle that. Because uh, some of the, there's going to be some pretty women hanging from ropes. Um, and, you know, the famous faces, these, these, uh, movie stars and uh, media people and others that uh, over the years have had uh, a following and uh, many people have soft spots in their hearts for these people because they're movie stars or because they're in media or and so forth and you treat them like family or you treat them like people that should be revered and respected when actually they're baby raping uh, child fuckers at that drink adrenochrome um, and they need killing. It's as simple as that and they're going to be killed. And uh, so that's going to be hard in your psyche when people that you, uh, like when I found out about Bill Murray, uh, I was very sad to find out about Bill Murray. Um, same thing, Ellen, same thing, Oprah, same thing, you know, a lot of these different people, same thing, Jim Carrey, right? Made me laugh, but um, sorry, you don't get to rape children. You just, you just don't. You just don't get to rape children. The least among us uh, need protection from the rest of us. Uh, and when you find out that these people are trafficking in organs and adrenochrome and sex slaves and, 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 uh, and it's part of their cult, um, because, uh, what we figured out and what finally people have figured out, and again, I don't know what the numbers are. Um, I know I was naive and thought it was a lot less than it was, and it's a lot more than you might think, uh, when it comes to what percentage wise, I don't know. I've heard people go as high as 80%. For damn sure, it's like thirty or forty percent. Um, I don't. I'm hoping that it's not eighty percent. But uh, the idea is that they use rape and this uh, cult to uh, keep you in line, right? Because once you've raped children, we got you on video. Ah, oh, now we got you, right? Now you'll make the movie we want you to make. Now you won't say the, the, you won't. Now you won't speak out against war. Now you won't. Uh, do this or that because we tell you not to, uh, and you will do this or that because we tell you to. Because if you don't. Um, we forgive for bombing children. We forgive for running guns. We forgive for uh, state secrets and selling state secrets. We forgive for all that kind of stuff, but we won't forgive the raping of children, and they know it. And the torture and rape of children, mm, no, that won't be forgiven. And they know it. Right? And further, uh, they also know that the system that they've set up to extract wealth from you and to put you in prison to make even more money once you uh, commit a crime, because they commercialized all crime, right? Bonds and bail bonds and so forth. But they know that a jury of your peers, more than likely, will not convict, convict you for killing a baby raper. Right? If you can prove that that person that you killed was raping children, uh, probably you, they may there may be a big rigmarole, and you may need to go into court and so forth. But a jury of your peers will probably let you off, and they know it. Right? That's why they made uh, the the actual uh, act of lynching is now a federal crime, right? Because they know what's coming. When you guys figure out what these fucking people were doing, um, it's going to get ugly. Right? And uh, they won't be able to kill them fast enough, publicly, uh, is my prediction. Um, and like I said, many have said that uh, it, you know, when the American people find out what we've done, they'll be blood in the streets. I agree with this. I think this will be the case. If you are good people, this will be the case. But right now, you can't believe that this is going on. Right? And again, most of the people, I mean, if, even those of you that have uh, stumbled down some of these rabbit holes, you cannot believe what's going on. Right? That they, they they were grinding these children up and using their bones in cement. I mean, because there are so damn many of them. 65,000 black children, uh, girls, missing in the black communities. And nobody will talk about it. Hush up. You know how much of an industry that is? You know how many people are involved in that? Not just Republicans and Democrats. That's just black kids. Right? Then there's white kids. Then there's Mexican kids. Then there's the kids that they don't even talk about. Then there's the kids in the Middle East. Then there's all the kids in Child Protective Services. Hundreds of thousands of those. Right? How many thousands and thousands of kids have gone missing? It's an industry. There are many, many people involved. Now, some of those people that are involved or peripherally involved that uh, you know were being paid to look the other way, they want to speak up. But again, most of you wouldn't believe them. And again, they're concerned about uh, you know their own safety, and they damn well ought to be. But I'm saying uh, to you is that uh, you, some of these guys need to be the hero. We got to let some of these guys be the hero. 
even though they've done atrocious things because they're trying to come clean. Right? Now, a lot of these guys are not going to come clean. They have def deny and defend until the end, until that rope snaps. They will deny and defend. Right? When the rope is snapping, they will still be declaring their innocence, even when you have them dead to rights, even when you have them on video, even when you have, right? Because they will deny and defend until the end. Right? And then you got the snitchers. This is my favorite part right now that's going on right now as we speak. Um, the people that are turning in those above them to try to save their own sorry asses, right? Uh, you're going to see a lot of this going on. Like, it's going to get ugly, ugly, ugly going on. And see, the true nature of Obama, the Manchurian candidate, that they've managed to put uh, an enemy at the highest level in our, our government. And it's clear from what he did and from the things that he said and from the fact that, the, just starting with the fact that in order to take my kids to soccer, I need to have a hard copy birth certificate. None of you have seen the hard copy. Right? You've seen this PDF, you've seen this thing on, online, but nobody has ever come out with a piece of paper and said, oh, here it is. Right? Here, take a picture of this. Nobody. Because there isn't one. And if there is one, what you would see is not what you want to see. But anyway, the idea being is that uh, that's not going to be let go either. Uh, the Clintons and their malfeasance, <laughs> malfeasance is, not also, is also not going to be let go. Um, they've got more murders under their belt than you can shake your dick at um, because they were involved in traffic. But the bottom line, my friends, is they set up, uh, what would you rather be known for, treason or baby rape, right? So the, a lot of these guys, they'll go down uh, for treason, but they won't go down for baby rape. That's part of the, uh, that's part of the uh, terms of surrender that have already been agreed to. Like I said, what you're watching is theater. It's uh, basically already over because... The idea is that they've got them dead to rights. Uh, all these people that thought that they were bleaching their hard drives or destroying the evidence. No, if you've sent an email, it's there somewhere. They've got it. And if you were Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton or any one of these others uh, in the high places that sent an email, for damn sure, they know where they are. <laughs> they have them cataloged in order. Um, there's no getting away from this, my friends. They, they have everything. And they've said it over and over again. We have everything. Um, so now it's just a matter of bringing out all the everything that they have in the proper order um, in order to uh, hang these people uh, appropriately so that they can't wiggle their way out of it. Uh, and see, they would have been able to wiggle their way out of it because they would have had sympathetic judges and sympathetic prosecutors. But all of those prosecutors in the DOJ and FBI that uh, basically told uh, the guys in the DOJ that told the FBI that they weren't going to prosecute for uh, gross negligence and they weren't going to because they're in on it. And because a lot of the emails, uh, if you read between the lines, talk about child trafficking and sex trafficking and so forth. This has always been the case going back to ancient times. Right? Part of the big political deals came with slaves. Right? Money, slaves, guns, armaments, etc. Uh, tribute, basically. And women and children have always been part of the tribute. So have men, right? Male slaves. Uh, but I mean, you know, slaves have always been part of it. You are uh, a free range slaves, but I mean, these are the, uh, the free range slaves uh, get dragged into, you know, absolute slavery, abject slavery, not just free range slavery, uh, where you, you know, you can drive wherever you want, but you gotta pay for the car. Right? You can drive wherever you want, but you're gonna be subject to tax while you're on the road, right? Speeding tickets, right? Um, there's ways out of this, people have figured out, but I mean, the idea is that as soon as you leave your house, anything you do is subject, is, is now commerce. They've considered, they've converted it into commerce. So if you commit a crime, that's commerce, right? You need to have a bond. Um, and the idea that, uh, you want out of that, well, there's paperwork to be done. But the point being is that you basically are free to go over your, wherever you want on the planet, as long as you pay them, <laughs> give them some money for a passport, give them some money for... Uh, this and that. You may have to bribe some guys at the border on top of everything else. Um, but, I mean, the idea is that uh, they've got you five ways from Sunday. They pay for you, get, you pay for your medical, you pay for your, uh, you pay for your freedom, right? You're a patriot. Um, and you pay in license. Marriage license, really? I mean, it's amazing that they don't have prima nocta. <laughs> they should be able to fuck your wife if they want to. Uh, because, I mean, do you need a license to be married? I mean, is it otherwise illegal for you to express your love with another? And oh yeah, because you're you're combining two corporations, so you need a, you need permission, and you got to make sure that if you're going to have uh, those corporations combined in the old days, they want to make sure that the product of that will be a bright, outstanding child that they can tax and so forth, and vaccinate and then extract well from. 
So um, they didn't want you uh, giving birth to a mongrel or giving birth to a child that would need uh, help from the state because that costs them money. What they want is somebody that'll make them money. So they made sure that you, you know, first cousins weren't marrying and so forth. Anyway, the point being is that uh, they license every fucking thing. Everything. Okay. Um, but you're still basically free to do what you want. Um, when you become one of their sex slaves, well, now you're not free, right? Now you have to submit to sex. Now you have to submit to, uh, you know, labor and so forth. Or they kill you or beat you or uh, otherwise work on your mind. Because a lot of these guys will do it freely. They'll do it uh Willingly, as it were. It's not really free will because their mind has been fucked, but at the same time, uh, they're not being coerced. They look like they're doing it uh, out of their own free will. Um, and that free will has been uh, gotten out of them using usually fear tactics, or they know that if they don't comply, uh, some member of their family will be hurt. So a lot of times they're doing it not for themselves, but because they don't want uh, a child or a sibling or a parent to... Uh, uh, be harmed because these people will kill and make no mistake they have no issue with killing and murder and maim and torture uh, of children babies right? they'll do it to babies they'll, I mean make no mistake uh, if they want to shut, uh, shut you up uh, they will now see people are worried about me don't worry about me I've got a couple of thousand followers on YouTube I think my most popular videos got like 49,000 views so forth. If I had millions of followers, now that's a whole other thing, but I'll never get to that point because they've got the censorship thing going on. But in order to uh, snuff somebody out like me or any of these other guys, Seth Rich or any of the other people that they've killed, many of the doctors that found out about GMAF and so forth, um, they had large followings. They had thousands and thousands of followers, right? So it's worth it to them to shut them up. Um, and, but it, see, it costs a lot of money because you got to pay off judges, you got to pay off police, you got to pay, right? Because you got to pay off the coroner. Uh, to write, uh, you know, cause of death, suicide, uh, even just that much, right? That guy got paid. He didn't just do it, be or well, or he was coerced, one or the other. But um, it takes money, and, and it takes, like, lots and lots of money. It doesn't, like, one murder, it's, like, multiple millions of dollars because you've got to pay off all these different people to, to touch it up and sweep it under the rug. Um, and so little guys, uh, they don't do it for little guys. They do it for big guys, guys that have uh, the ability to influence large numbers, right? I do not have that ability. I influence very teeny tiny numbers. Right? So it's not worth it to them to just stuff somebody out like me because I don't have enough of a following uh, to, you know, just, it's math, right? Now, if I got super popular and I had multiple millions and I was on Twitter and every time I tweeted, I got, you know, a thousand likes and so forth uh, and had, you know, a, a couple of million or a couple of hundred thousand followers, uh, that's a whole other thing. But no, I have a couple of hundred followers. Right? And then even on uh, if, if, uh, Facebook or uh, this platform, YouTube or BitChute, what is it? It's a couple of hundred, right? I think I got like 1,700 or something like that. I was surprised, actually. I'm, I'm amazed I'm over a thousand. But anyway, that's way too small of a number, even doing the, the butterfly effect for them to, to trouble with somebody like me because, in other words, nobody's listening. And on top of that, uh, it's much easier to just, uh, would be, to just, you know, that guy's crazy, right? <clears throat> Put some people down on below and, and uh, you know, on Facebook or wherever and just make comments and so forth and just uh, discredit me. Um, that's much easier than killing me because killing me costs a lot more money. Same thing with most of you. But you'll find out, uh, on the other hand, that, um, sadly enough, they have made it so that you are worth more to them dead than alive. They've insured you so that you are not, uh, you are worth much more to them dead than alive. Um, and again, they have all the money, right? So all they're doing is claiming your trust. All they're doing is <laughs> that set of key trust that you haven't uh, figured out is an actual thing, um, uh, right? And that you pay in, you pay again, and then nobody claims all the money that's in there because uh, you've paid all this money in there and it's been accumulating interest. And then they take it off when you die. After a few years, nobody claims it, right? And uh, it's theirs. Um, so it's, so there's a lot more, so you're worth a lot more to them dead than alive, let's put it that way. But while you're dead, they can extract small amounts of wealth from you, uh, over and over again. But in order to kill you, uh, and shut you up, if you become that important to them, because you've made enough noise where it's starting, you're starting to become a thorn in their side, and, uh, people are starting to follow you and starting to figure out and start to listen to you and start to figure out, wait a minute, there really are these satanic pedophiles, and wait a minute, adrenochrome is a thing, and wait a minute, right? And once you, right? Okay. 
Um, and maybe we shouldn't be dressing up in funny clothes and killing each other in large numbers. That's just silly. We should be past that. We should be all working together uh, for free energy. And that's another thing uh, that the reason why they kill, you know, uh, and murder and, you know, suicide, all these different inventors and so forth is because uh, the money again. And not just because of the money, but because of all the, what's the word I want? Freedom that that would unleash. I don't know if freedom is the right word, but the energy that that would unleash because free energy uh, would make it so that uh, you don't need to be a part of the grid. You don't need to be part of a city. You can be off on your own inventing in the middle of nowhere uh, or creating or writing or dancing or whatever you want uh, without paying them anything. Oh, they don't want that. I don't so, uh, and if you were somebody that was giving people free energy, and see, the fact that palladium is where it's at, that's a big clue, because palladium is one of the primary ingredients you need, pure palladium, in, uh, you know, so-called cold fusion devices. Um, or what do they call it? Low energy nuclear reactions, right, Linear. Uh, it's palladium. And lo and behold, palladium has gone through the roof. Clue! Uh, I remember when you could get a one ounce coin for 200 bucks. Now a one ounce coin is 1500 bucks. And that whole market is upside down on top of everything else, right? Palladium is 1500 bucks, which is more than gold. Uh, platinum is more than gold now. Uh, gold is 1300. Platinum is like 800. Uh, we're talking per ounce. Um, roughly speaking, I don't have the figures. And silver is like 15 bucks an ounce uh, or 16 bucks, not even. Uh, last I checked, between 15 and 16. Uh, you can't pull it out of the ground. Most mines can't even pull it out of the ground for that price. So the, the actual silver mines are closed. If uh, it's a mine where silver is a uh, byproduct of production, it's it's still coming out of the ground. But most of the uh, mines that um, that were actually silver mining, they can't even get, even in the rich loads in China and uh, uh, South America, uh, you can't get it out of the ground for 15 bucks and turn it into an ingot for $15. So... Um, that gold and silver that I was getting, well, I didn't get much gold, but silver. The silver that I was getting uh, 10, 15 years ago for, what, 10 ounces shipped to your door for 50 bucks? I mean, literally off of eBay, I was getting 10 ounces, 10 ounces of silver shipped to my door for $50. Um, well, now it's like $150 or $160, I think, total. Um, it's cheaper than it was then because there is way more than three times the money uh, in 15 years. I mean, trillions have been printed, trillions and trillions and trillions. Uh, so there's like 20 or 30 times the money, uh, but the price has only gone up three times. So perhaps you should get your $15 an ounce silver and then uh, hope for the best. Because when that silver becomes worth what it's supposed to be worth in the hundreds of dollars, uh, you're not going to be happy. But in the meantime, uh, collect silver. And the other thing is nickels, just regular old, plain old, American nickels are still honest money. A nickel's worth about a nickel. Um, all the other coins are not. And that's that's treasury issued currency, treasury issued money. Um, I am predicting that there will be a time when that nickel will buy quite a bit uh, because the dollars will be worth nothing. And I mean nothing when they, people start figuring out that there's like, you know, hundreds of trillions of dollars. Ugh, God. Uh, and see, this is the thing. They hate Trump. Oh my God, they hate Trump. Uh, take a look at the Nexium thing. Uh, that case is going out. Uh, that whole thing, which is a smokescreen for uh, for the current events that are going on, which is the whole thing about how you know people are cheating for their kids in schools and, and you know Ivy League schools for degrees and scholarships and all this other stuff, uh, paying money to get money. Uh, but the idea being is that. Uh, they hate Trump because uh, the, the Department of Justice and uh, the FBI has been cleaned out and they're going to start like enforcing law. <gasps> oh my God. They're, I mean, literally enforcing law. Uh, like, you know, it's bad to rape children. Uh, <laughs> you know, silly things like that. It's bad to have stuff on your uh, private email server when you are a Secretary of State. Um, he is going to start enforcing some of these laws. Uh, and they hate that. Hate that. Uh, same thing on our southern border. They had our southern border was porous, and they were bringing children, guns, in both directions. But, but I mean, uh, our southern border atrocious things were going on down there, and uh, many children were being sold into slavery. Um, 
and he's putting an end to it. Oh, they hate that. And then the ones that weren't being put into slavery and the ones that were just coming across the border, well, we get, to, we get them to vote. And they're enough to uh, change an election, and not just enough to tilt it one way or the other uh, in some of the uh, lower you know, county and state elections because uh, these immigrants will vote however they are told to vote um, by the people that got them across the border. Um, and generally, that's Democrat. Right? Because they've been mind fucked into thinking that uh, that's the way they want to go, when actually couldn't be further from the truth. The Democrats just use them and abuse them, uh, and uh, finally, finally, uh, with Blexit and people like Candace Owens uh, and many others, not just her, um, they've figured out that uh, you know the Democratic Party, not the friend of the minority at all, uh, have been making promises since the '60s, have not kept the promises. Meantime, Trump puts a hundred billion dollars into uh, you know black communities uh, through the business action plan. Uh, no word there. Uh, meantime, Trump's talking about making uh, LGBT rights a thing all around the world. Mm, nothing from the LGBT community, LGBT community there. And uh, oh, we've got this uh, New Zealand case. Like I said, that I watched that video five times. Where's the blood? Where's the blood? Just where's the blood? If you watch that video and it's now a crime, there's a clue. Uh, but um, apparently he clears the hallway, walks down the hallway, shoots. Where's the screaming? Right? All these women are getting shot. You ever been shot? You ever been hit by anything? It hurts. You at least go, ow. <laughs> right? You don't just silently take it up the ass. And then there's electrostatic shock. When you get hit, when that bullet hits you, it'll make you jump. Um, none of that. Right? Uh, I mean, just... That video, I mean, if you've ever seen somebody get shot, or if you've ever shot an animal, psh, there'll be blood. Right? There'll be a blood cloud. There'll be a spray of blood. I used to work with a guy that uh, his job in forensics was to tell you what happened in the room by the way the blood hit the wall and so forth. He could tell you the angle of the shot. He could tell you where the guy was standing and so forth by just the blood splatter. Perfectly white walls, no blood anywhere. Anyway, and then he walks down the hall, shoots these guys. So apparently it's a self-cauterizing bullet. Um, because in the hallway, there's no blood. Right? There would be pools of blood under these people, because once they shoot, the, 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 you know, those wounds bleed. And uh, when you sit there, uh, there's a lot of blood in the body, and it seeps out and makes a hell of a mess. Didn't see that mess when... Uh, yeah, see, I've seen things that cannot be unseen. I'm, I hate to say it. And then the other thing, when you look at the bodies, um, even after just a few minutes, when they're laying on their side like that... Um, the one side will start to turn black because as the blood pools. I have seen this with my own eyes, right? And it, that, that happens in minutes, right? As soon as they're dead, the, when the blood isn't circulating, um, you will see the color change. Um, none of that in this video. Uh, what happened there? And because they sure are making it sound like, oh yeah, all these people died and so on. Uh, and, they, and then what do they do? Come after Candace Owens, come after... Uh, uh, the 13th, because remember, today is Tuesday, it's the 19th, this is, we're counting down to the new year, um, and I found it very interesting, like I said, those of you that understand that the new year starts uh, on the 21st, well, actually, it's the 22nd, is the first day of uh, spring, but, and then what, the next uh, holiday coming up after that is the 21st in April, which will be the Feast of Ishtar, uh, Easter, um, so the idea is that uh, you have uh, many of the uh, sacred holidays coming up when it comes to astro uh, theology, and uh, Q and the QAnons and the Trump were all talking about 19, 20, 21st being the dates for a lot of these releases and a lot of things that were counting down. Um, See, because they understand that uh, you should be uh, fasting and praying and uh, eating certain foods and so forth in uh, preparation for manifestation for the new year that comes, which starts on the 21st. Um, and then feeding your mind. Feed your mind with uh, information. And again, I have many playlists now. Check out my playlists um, here uh, there, I've got a playlist for UCC, I've got a playlist for mailing three cent stamps, I've got a playlist for, uh, and see, there's the Constitution, back up, slow down, uh, all this stuff with the UCC and all this stuff, with it. that's why I do, before you act, before you pay people money to uh, get you in trouble, uh, read, 
And one of the main things you need to read is the constitutions and then understand how uh, commerce and then understand how uh, it has all been converted into commerce and then your place in it and you, the difference between your man and your straw man in Legis, uh, the, uh, that entity, that corporate entity that they have created for you so that you can do commerce. Uh, and then understand that maybe you don't want to get rid of your Sedicate Trust. Maybe you don't want to get rid of that Social Security number because that's your uh, entrance. That's the way you access uh, your trust. Uh, and then in order to access that trust, you better get your birth certificates in order and you better uh, claim yourself and your loved ones. Um, and you don't necessarily need UCC to do that. Uh, but anyway, like I said, there's I don't know where you are on your journey. Uh, you don't know where I am on mine. I have done a lot of reading. I have not done a lot of acting because I want to read first. But I'm starting to figure out, okay, well, I need to figure, I need to fill out this paperwork. And that's about to happen uh, so that, do I have it here? I do not have it here. Wow. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, this thing right here uh, needs to change, right? Uh, I need to update the paperwork on it. Uh, see, and I here's a sheet of paper I have that I'm uh, just taking notes, right? And uh, if I take a look at it, um, it is not legal for them to ask you any government agency, and you can find that uh, no social security number. They don't get to ask for your social security number, and that's at 42 USC 408.8. Um, then you got to look up uh, rules of uh, procedure in courts and so forth, uh, rules of civil procedure. Uh, you want to pay attention to 12B, you want to pay attention to Rule 17. When you're looking at the UCC, you want to look at the 9-3-12 and 9-13. Read those about securities and how you write those out. Um, understand that you have the right to be heard in court. That is due process. Uh, let's see here. There's all kind of stuff in here. Um, uh, I can't, anyway, there's all, there's all manner of stuff on that sheet that I need to look up. And see, the cool thing is now, uh, DuckDuckGo, and also I, I love searching, uh, using various search engines and see what they show you, because Google is now shit, absolute shit. Um, they don't show you anything. Uh, but you can look up certain references, and if you have the actual site to the law, they will take you to Cornell's law site and so forth. But overall, you want DuckDuckGo you want uh, some of the other websites so that you can look up all the terms in here and uh, just do some reading. Um, but understand that uh, what binds them, and they all swore an oath to the Constitution, right? That binds them. So you better know what the Constitution says. And then understand in the, the books that they have, one of the books that they have is going to be the Holy Bible, right? And understand why that book is in every courtroom and then uh, Black's Law Dictionary, and then Bouvier's Law Dictionary. You better know what the words mean. You better know what the words mean. Uh, and then when you act, uh, act with uh, caution and understanding of what you're doing. Um, and then make sure that what you're doing doesn't come with penalties because what they want you to do is uh, fuck up so they can throw you in jail. <laughs> they want control of you. Now they can make you, uh, you know, hammer out uh, canteens and make uh, stuff for the war machine and uh, work you as an actual slave for 17 cents a day or 17 cents an hour or 10 cents an hour or whatever they're paying in their private prison uh, system. And then every person that they have in their private prison prison system, they get money from the uh, tax system, to, right? So they make money on that. They pay their prisoners. Uh, they uh, build and all the contractors that make money off of building the prisons. And then they make a profit on top of everything else. So they want you to fuck up so they can put you in jail, right? So make sure that if you fuck up, uh, it doesn't come with penalties that cause you that cause jail time. Right? A lot of these guys, uh, you're writing uh, liens or you're writing uh, securities or you're writing right securities fraud. Uh oh, right? Oh, comes with prison time, right? Debt collection. Uh, one of the things that they indemnified you with is the fact that if you go into debt, you can't go to prison unless like you absolutely. I mean, you can you can stretch it by being fraudulent about your debt. But I mean, if you just have a credit card and you can't pay it, they can't put you in prison, right? If you have a car, uh, they can, uh, you know, repo the car, but they can't put you in prison. If you get in over your head when a house and you can't make the payments, they'll take your house, uh, but they won't put you in prison, right? In other countries, this is not the case. Um, but you need to understand that if you're fraudulent or if, they, if you can be construed as fraud or willful violations of law or willful violations of fraud um, or causing, you know, felonies and so forth, a lot of those felonies come with jail time.
So don't commit felonies. <laughs> I don't know why I have to say that out loud. But uh, understand what you're doing. And then understand the penalty if there is one. Uh, a lot of times there is no penalty. There is no penalty for you claiming your birth certificate. There is no plant penalty for you uh, for making a declaration. Um, but there are penalties for you fraudulently leaning a judge, for example. <laughs> oh, you can get in trouble for that, right? Or or uh, or anybody, any officer of the court or or public official and so forth. You know, from uh, your county or state or federal agents and so forth. Um, yeah, those have teeth, but at the same time, uh, you better know what the fuck you're doing. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Um, the point being is that there's paperwork to be done, and you need to understand that they gave you remedies, but they didn't have to tell you what the remedies were. They didn't have to tell you where where they were or how you could get them. They just had to give you the remedies. Um, and it's man, it's great, because I was reading one where it's like, well, because we can't give you this, we're going to give you that. Right? And one of those is the fact that you can fill out your form, uh, fill out your paperwork, and uh, declare the fact that you are not a United States citizen, that you are not in part of that enclave of uh, the 10 square miles of uh, uh, Washington, D.C. And um, they're going to tell you that, oh, no, it's, we are an actual government. We're not a corporation. They're a corporation. Um, and so is your strong man. And, uh, but that doesn't help you. Like I said, if you just... Uh, want to make declarations or if you want to just say, well, I don't consent. Well, that's great, but you got to let them know you don't consent. You got to fill out the right paperwork. You got to fill out their forms. We have become Kafkaesque. We have become, uh, in Russian literature, what is it, Dostoevsky and, and others that wrote um, the just the absurdity of the position that we're in, where you can't just be a man on the land. You have to fill out paperwork to let them know that you're a man on the land. Uh, and that comes back to um, the fact that the Romans and the Phoenicians and the Egyptians were the ultimate in uh, merchants and uh, their manifests, and they kept track of every fucking thing, right? Every grain of rice um, on their ships. So uh, they gave you citizenship, and uh, they made you into a uh, corporation, and uh, basically you are chattel. You are cattle. You are, and they have numbered you and, uh, and log you down your date of your nativity and your date of birth and uh, where you were birthed and uh, what that means. So who gets the tax revenue and who gets, right, and so on. Um, so until such time as you stand up and say, uh, nay, nay, I am a man. I am not a human. I am a man or a woman and uh, naturally born and alive and uh, understand that your certificate of live birth owns that birth certificate, that long form. So you need to get control of those certificates. Uh, let them know that you have control of those certificates and uh, keep them uh, in line with their oath to the Constitution. Because if it's a judge, if it's a policeman, if it's a sheriff, if it's uh, anybody that's involved in the courts, bailiff on down, um, they've all taken an oath to the Constitution, your state Constitution, right? To uphold the Constitution. So you need to get a certified copy of your Constitution. You need to have a certified copy of the uh, Constitution for the United States. Um, and then ask them, which one of these Constitutions have you sworn to uphold? And um, because there's a couple of United States. Uh, there's the Constitution of and there's the Constitution for. Anyway, but you got to know the Constitution, what's in there. Uh, and you need to understand how that applies. And uh, you will see that they will absolutely do whatever they can to avoid the constitutions. UCC, they're good with the UCC because that's uh, commerce and the commercial code. And, ooh, they can, with contract and contract law, they can twist those words and bend those words however they want. But the constitution's a little more set in stone, a little more not so malleable, right? Very difficult to change uh, the constitution for the United States or the constitution of the United States. Very difficult. Same thing with your state constitution. Very difficult to change that thing. UCC changes all the time. <laughs> UCC, fuck it. Uh, ooh, the slaves have got have gotten privy to this. Well, we need to change the law, so they'll change it a little bit or change make 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 differences in the you know from one passage to another, and you'll see various versions of the UCC that are not the same. And people, like I said, they were doing one thing uh, ten years ago. That one thing doesn't work today. Um, so read the damn law. Understand what the words mean. Uh, educate yourself and educate others. I think I've gone on uh, long enough here, but understand, you're not going to get justice in the courts of law, right? unless you demand justice, uh, and they will trick you. They will use every kind of trick. My favorite trick, I was in a court of law just recently, and uh, he asked me to pronounce my very common uh, American last name, J 
just like uh, they said they would because he was trying to make joinder between myself and uh, the name that was in all caps on his pieces of paper, right? On his documents. Um, and the person that was in the room, uh, the guy that was in the room, the man that was in the room was the authorized representative for <laughs> that person, right? Uh, I am not that person. I'm the authorized representative. So are you. Um, and you need to stand on your square because they will mess with you and do everything they can to try and uh, trick you into uh, getting joined here because they're sure that you don't even know what your name is, right? Uh, I will put links below, many, many links below. Um, understand, future so bright, I got to wear shades because it is on like Donkey Kong, my friends. They are taking them down one after the other. What you're going to see, you're going to see Obama get it. You're going to see, and I mean get it. Um, you're going to see uh, Hillary Clinton get it. Uh, you're going to see, uh, and you're going to see them talk about, oh, our failing health. We don't feel so good anymore. Uh, anyway, uh, but no, uh, that was a pretty good impression. Anyway, um, Clinton's going down. Uh, all of them. The, the, the guys in the FBI and DOJ, most of those guys going down. Many judges going down. Many people in the media that you're familiar with going down. Many, and I, and I mean uh, news media and so forth, the, the uh, mainstream media, as they say, but also many people in Hollywood, oh, those sick fucks, uh, many of them going down too. Um, they've all had a part to play. They've all been one hand washing the other. They've all been looking the other way. They've all been distracting you. They've all been not, um, when informed, and this is the other thing, I have a, I have to be very careful on this one. A flight attendant uh, going into a certain city noticed that Arabs, uh, a lot of them go to that city with young babies and then they leave out of that city without the young baby. It's like, should I keep a log of this? Yes, you should fucking keep a log of this, but don't go to your local police. Your police are probably in on it, right? Your sheriffs are probably in on it. There are very few people that you can go to that aren't in on it. There are very U.S. Marshals probably in on it. Um, like I said, the numbers are high. It's 30 to 40 percent. So um, even if they're not on, in on it, maybe one of their friends or relations is, and, or you know, their coworker and so forth, and they overhear the conversation or they oversee the paperwork or they make sure, right, because their superior is on it, they're not in on it. Well, they'll come down on that guy and they'll come down on you. So what you need to do is be very surreptitious. Get, uh, keep a log. Keep a, keep uh, Definitely keep track if you see this is the see something, do something portion of the uh, presentation. Um, but the idea is keep a log, keep, uh, keep it in writing, uh, as much information as you can, and uh, keep it aside, and, and keep it to your damn self. And then there's guys like Craig Sawyer, and then there's guys like uh, Dave Janda, and then there's guys like, uh, there's certain people that you can go to um, with your information once you have it airtight. Um, and with that, they can be acted on. But if you try to go to your local constable or you try to go to your local police officer, I don't give a fuck if it's your brother-in-law. Um, don't do don't because uh, the police departments it's all fucking under control, right? It's all under surveillance. So, like I said, even if they're clean, uh, they're upper they're somewhere along the line. And I speak with experience on this one. Somewhere up the line, uh, it's not clean. And somewhere up the line, uh, they will come down and either quash the information quash you, um, or what have you. So you have to get it into the hands of people that uh, are able to act, right? Because a lot of you people are starting to figure out, wait a minute, right? Because you're right. It's fucking all you got to do is look around. And I was in LA for seven months. Every fucking where I mean, it's like, do we not call the police in this fucking county? And no, oh, no, you don't call the police in this county because if you do call the police, what you're going to get is somebody that has a f symbol on his badge that lets you know uh, right off the bat, uh, whose team he's playing for, even if he doesn't know he's playing for that team, um, somebody up the line is. So uh, going to your local police department, your local sheriff, your local judge is probably not. You want to write them letters, though. You want to fuck with those guys and let them know you know, right? Uh, so you write letters, oh, why isn't this being looked into, or I know about such and such, this and that, or, you know, cases that you already know about, not personal stuff, right? Um, and then, like I said, keep it to yourself, keep it to your damn self, and then uh, get it into the hands of somebody that you trust. Um, and unfortunately, those the number of people that you trust are minuscule. Uh, not because everybody's in on it, 
that enough of them are in on it that they keep uh, tabs on their fellow man. They keep tabs on their, you know, the superiors keep tabs on the underlings and make sure that none of this meets the light of day, right? It's certainly not going to get to your news media. It's certainly not going to get, right? We're getting there. We're definitely getting there, but we're not there, right? But uh, in the next, ooh, I'm going to say two years, it's, they're going to start falling like flies. But anyway, like my own experience in California and other places, right? Uh, they're compromised, right? And now, slowly but surely, that's why they hate uh, Trump so much, is that slowly but surely these buses are coming to pass. Go take a look at how many uh, pedophile buses and how many sex slave trafficking buses and so forth have happened uh, while, uh, I mean, the same, this was all going on under Obama and Bush and Clinton. Uh, you just didn't have the bus. Now, under Trump, these guys are free to uh, start taking these uh, organized rings down. If you are familiar or know about an organized ring, like I said, uh, take the information down to the best of your ability, document to the best of your ability, and keep it to your fucking self. And do not email. Do, I mean, and if you have it on a computer, I have a computer over here, never gets on the internet, right? They, and and don't tell me, oh, you know, just because, no, because uh, the, uh, what do you call it? the Wi-Fi, <laughs> it's out. Unless it's actually plugged in, um, there is no way for them to turn that computer on, right? Unless I actually have it plugged into the internet. Okay, uh, that's how far you got to go. That's called cold storage. Uh, you got to, because it, everything on this computer, uh, they're watching this, or they could be, I don't know. I don't think I'm that important, but I mean, and, and when I say they watching it, it's uh, algorithms. It's not an actual human sitting behind the computer. It's an algorithm that uh, listens for certain words, right? Your speech recognition and so forth. All right. So the point being is that uh, if you've ever sent an email, uh, it exists, right? <laughs> Hillary Clinton is going to find that out the hard way. Um, so uh, sending off emails or sending off letters, uh, the only way to do it, even then, hard copy, right? And every letter you send, uh, they have the face of it. They may not uh, open the letter and know what's in it, but if you sent anything to anyone and you've received anything, uh, somewhere there's a database of every fucking thing you've ever received in your mailbox ever. Promise, right? The to and from address, and it, it, I mean, they've taken a picture of it. Promise you, right? And it exists somewhere. Um, so if you're gonna, so there's no way to, for you to transact. There is no way for you to communicate outside without them knowing about it. Now, um, the point being is that if you keep your uh, data to yourself and you keep your records to yourself, um, I believe that's Sun Tzu, right? Keep your plans dark as night, and then when you're ready to fall, fall like lightning, right? So you need to be ready to go uh, when the time comes. Well, okay, and so what you're doing in the meantime is gathering information, gathering information, right? Uh, and keep track of the people that you know that are involved. Right? And I know a lot of you watching this. I know you know. I know a lot of you have, uh, right? But you can't speak. Don't speak. I agree with you, right? One, they'd never believe you. On top of that, the average sheep would never believe you. And two, even if they did, uh, the chances of you running into somebody that's going to do something about it uh, are very slim. The chances of you uh, running into somebody that uh, is going to try and shut you up or is going to uh, inform others of your insolence uh, is uh, very high. Uh, this is the world that we're in. We are not in the uh, good guys win world. We are, uh, the bad guys have pretty much fucking taken control over every goddamn thing, right? So uh, until such time as you understand the fact that they are in government, they are in your police force, they are in your judiciary, they are everywhere. Uh, and like I said, there's not everybody, but it's enough, and they have enough power, and they're ruthless that uh, you, you need to be cautious, right? You need to be intelligent about it. But understand, the good guys are winning, right? Because they can't do everything. And it's coming from all sides now. So uh, for you to act and for you to uh, uh, get ready for what comes and for you to put your ducks in a row so that you can begin to uh, aid and abet those guys that are on the good side with uh, yet more documentation and information. Uh, and believe me, for the most part, they've already got it. Right, but maybe they maybe you do have something that they don't know about. Right? Uh, well, then it might be uh, behoove you to uh, keep it to yourself, but keep record. Uh, and like I said, in impeccable records. Um, and you know who, what, where, why, when, all the the fives, the, the Ws, and uh, and then documentation. Uh, right, that you can back it up. 
that you know who these people are and you know they, you know what they were doing and where they were on such and such date and you can back it up it's not just hearsay right and a lot of times they'll be able to take that as collaborating evidence uh, in a case where they have other information here on Maui we just had a case where a disturbed young man assaulted a three-year-old that guy is much safer in jail than he is outside because you see the Facebook comments and Maui is a small place right and again uh, if somebody got off, uh, went off the handle, and see, you, you, if you go kill that guy, you're just as crazy as that guy. Right? Let the law handle it. But I mean, it's getting to the point where um, I, he only gets six months for assaulting a, a, a three-year-old. Uh, good, let him serve his three. And if he manages to get out of jail, because I can guarantee you, in jail, uh, they don't look kindly on those that molest children. That's one thing in the in the jails you'll see. Um, yeah, anyway, but the idea is uh, if he gets out and somebody kills him, uh, the chances of the community putting the person that killed the three-year-old child molester in uh, in the ground uh, is low, and they know it, right? That's why they're preparing for these things. Now, and that's a, that's a one-off. I don't believe he's part of any kind of MK Ultra or any kind of uh, organized thing, uh, but there are many... Uh, people who are involved in organized things and they're being found out and when they are found out and uh, they are removed by the populace through non-judicial means, extrajudicial killing as it were, um, they're going to have a very difficult time and they know it, this is what I'm saying, um, prosecuting or uh, getting these people put in jail because uh, we do not forgive for the rape of children. Like I said, uh, the Alliance right now, uh, the Alliance bombs babies in the Middle East and has been for decades. But now they're trying to put an end to the trafficking and sex slavery and so forth. Sex slavery that's been going on for decades, centuries in this country and others. And then understand that um, once we clean all this stuff up, uh, there's more to do. Right? There's, there's, there's always going to be more because they don't go away. They just go underground. Okay. So uh, be vigilant. Um, if, if you have knowledge, good. Uh, but be smart about the, your knowledge and don't be like, oh no, I just found out about this thing and you go running off to the cops because more than likely the cops are not. Okay, learn your history. Learn about the Phoenicians and the Egyptians and how, and how these four cults and these brotherhoods have uh, taken over your, how it is that we got to where we are. Because the way we got to where we are is actually a very easy road to follow uh, once you take a look back and you realize that all the history and shit that you were taught is shit. Uh, and that, no, it boils down to uh, a very few wealthy people um, and these others. And like I said, people are starting to figure out that mm, there might be others. Um, can I say for sure? I can't say for sure. But here's what I know. There is a wealthy elite that practices uh, the dark arts that practices uh, religion that is not common to the uh, to the average person. Um, their religion is uh, got to do with Saturn and and the elder gods and child sacrifice and human sacrifice and blood sacrifice, real sacrifice, not where you're doing magic in church where it's the you know that you turn water or blood into wine or wine into blood and uh, bread into flesh and flesh into blood. And then you eat that, and yeah, okay, that's that's a whole, that, that's kindergarten. Um, these guys are actually eating flesh, actually drinking blood, um, actually torturing children to get the adrenochrome out of them. Um, and it's a whole huge business. And there's an and then there are those that do not partake in the elder rituals, but they still have sex lives. And uh, they still understand how excellent it is to have people that have uh, done these uh, obscene things uh, and got them on video or, you know, they're able to blackmail them with this. That works out excellent for them. Right? That, 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 that makes a, a brotherhood and, and a uh, society that they can absolutely control that way. And then, uh, you know, the money and, and power and positions and so forth, that's just icing on the cake. Right? I mean, because, yeah, I mean, people do all kinds of crazy stuff for money, but they'll do even more crazy stuff to make sure that you don't find out that they were having sex with children, like babies, right? Or harming uh, women or whatever, right? They'll do uh, much more to keep that secret than, than they will just for money or, you know, power, etc. Get it? 
All right, and that goes into the judiciary, that goes into politics, that goes into uh, business, that goes into uh, Hollywood, that goes into all of it, right? I mean, and, and it all is a sick dance. It's a very, very sick dance where politics and media and, and law and so forth all dance together to uh, facilitate this disgusting thing that, uh, is, that Trump is trying to stamp out. And it's not just Trump, because Trump, Trump was aware of it, but uh, he was not in a position to do much about it. And from what I can see from uh, listening to interviews with a lot of different people, um, yeah, he danced around and was in and about uh, people that uh, were absolutely up to their eyeballs, <laughs> right up to their eye teeth in, uh, in this disgusting uh, world, but uh, he did not partake. His uh, proclivity was for women, beautiful women, obviously. Look at his wife, look at all the beauty pageants, look at all the women that he's hung out with. I mean, uh, I mean look at his kids. I mean, they're all good looking, right, because he had sex with supermodels and... and you know, models, those those that are uh, supposedly the uh, American beauty myth. That's the thing he liked. He didn't like children, uh, and he wasn't into the adrenochrome or these other things. And this comes from many people that were in the business of procuring or were in the business of investigating. Um, the guy is, see, on that end, they picked the right guy because he's clean when it comes to that. And I think that's part of the reason why they vetted him before they put him in there. So that, uh, you know, they could throw all that stuff at them because they know when you're guilty, you, they, you know, when they, that's their modus operandi from going back centuries is when they're guilty, they accuse. So they accuse him of the pedophilia. They accuse him of uh, Russian collusion. They accuse him of dealing with the Russians and the spies and so forth when he had nothing to do with it. Um, and see, that's why they vetted him that way, because now it's clean. And then he could have guys like Mueller and... All the other people, uh, you know, dangling carrots in front of it while he's getting stuff done in the background. And that's what's going on. Uh, again, I am uh, in the Trump support camp, but I am not in the vote for Trump camp because it's just, it's just one of them. Right? It's just, he's just an oligarch just like them. He didn't get to be a billionaire by being, you know, your pal. Uh, but the point being is that, yeah, he's going to help clean things up. And they needed a guy that understood bankruptcy and understood, um, you know, how to negotiate because they needed to buy time, because the bad guys had this thing. They had uh, the edifice that is the United States and our economy. They had basically gutted it. They had pulled everything out, and they were just going to put Clinton in, and then the whole thing was going to fall over. So now he's doing his best to, to, uh, to buttress it, but at the same time, there's no way that uh, what comes is inevitable with the Federal Reserve and so forth. But um, even that, it looks very clear to me like Andrew Jackson and a few of them before, uh, he understands the uh, what our founding fathers and this country has always been in a war against the central bankers, and uh, he is point man in that war. And uh, I think they're going to wind up uh, pulling the rug out from underneath these uh, money printing Federal Reservists uh, and get rid of the central bank here. But in order to do that, that that will be one hell of a transition. And uh, there's no way that we, trans we transit from uh, central banking to sound money without there being some severe pain. Uh, and in order to do that, he had to prop up the economy. He had to bring money back in. He had to, right? And again, uh, if you understand the economics of the, of the situation, um, the dollar will inflate because he is successful. Right? If he brings all that money with it. One thing that we've done consistently is export our inflation. I, consistently for 30, 40 years uh, since we went off, since 71, since we went off that gold standard, um, have been very excellent at exporting our inflation. Um, now he's bringing all that money back home, right? $18 billion from Toyota, 18, billions here, billions there, billions there, steel manufacturing, right? Okay, all that money coming back into the country, uh, inside our borders, every dollar is going to be worth a little bit less because there are more dollars in circulation. There are more dollars being paid out in factories, um, making its way into the economy, making its way into the hands of workers and employees and so forth. So uh, now there's more dollars in the economy uh, that aren't being soaked up in uh, public works and... and uh, investors that, like, you know, for... Uh, roads and, 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 and large artifices like, uh, you know, high-speed rail and, 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 um, but I mean, infrastructure basically, 
um, but it's basically making its way into the consumer economy. So every dollar that w makes its way into the makes its way into the consumer economy makes each dollar that's already in the consumer economy worth that much less, right? Uh, and there are billions of dollars coming back in because it turns out there are trillions and trillions that they printed. These guys, we don't even know how much money they print, but it's like 21 trillion extra. We're already 22 trillion down and then we find another 22 trillion. Like I said, the uh, silver that I was buying for 50 bucks uh, is, that's, you know, it's three times worth, three times that amount now, uh, 150 bucks for 10 ounces or 160 with shipping and everything. Um, that's only three times as much. But if you figure out how much money uh, has been printed, it's hundreds, you know. Well, I won't go with hundreds, but we'll say 40 or 50 times as much, at least. I'm trying to do the math. It's hard to do the math because the numbers are all fudged and you can't get the numbers. But um, if there's 40 times more money uh, and silver's only gone up three times, well, then uh, it tells you that, uh, no, it's a pretty good deal right now uh, at $15. Because pretty soon, that I'm telling you, your money is going toward worthless. Um, and that's been the case. You, you think inflation was bad in the 70s? <laughs> Just wait. Uh, it's going to get a lot worse. Um, so what you want is precious metals. Uh, the, and it's one of the things that you want. The, uh, and, and again, um, a lot of these gurus are saying that, that things are so fucked up, you can't tell uh, the markets are not working. So... Is it just precious metals? Maybe you want some uh, Bitcoin or you know some uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, you want land. You want you want a little bit of everything because you can't tell what's going to be right. So prepare for the worst, right? Expect the best. Prepare for the worst. So you need land. You need uh, gold coins. You want cash. You're going to actually want physical <clears throat> pieces of paper. Um, <clears throat> you'll want uh, uh, crypto. You want. I mean, right? So just have have it all because it's hard to tell how it's going to go. And which way it's going to go first, right? In uh, throughout history, silver and gold has always been the storehouse of wealth. But uh, now we've got crypto. Now we right. So that doesn't mean that it's going to happen first, right? What looks like happened first was crypto happened first, where we had one Bitcoin at twenty thousand. Uh, if there wasn't crypto, that might have been gold and silver. But the idea being is that uh, since you don't know, have a little bit of everything, right? Make sure you got new tires in your car. Make sure you got a car that runs, right? Uh, make sure you have uh, some stored propane uh, so that you can boil water, so that you can eat those meals that you've got prepared, uh, right? Or that, you know, if you've got, uh, you know, those buckets of food, basically, uh, survival rations and so forth. Well, you got to be able to boil water. Uh, in order to boil water, you're going to need propane, or you're going to have to have some wood stored up or whatever. So, I mean, you got to have that end of it, right? And then hopefully that never happens because hopefully we never get to the Mad Max scenario where you're boiling water and, and you know, the water doesn't work and the electricity's off and, and people are roving around in gangs with guns taking stuff. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, hopefully what happens is uh, we transit from uh, this fiat-based currency to something that's a little more sound and we have markets that actually figure out uh, what is the value of an ounce of silver? What is the value of a barrel of oil? What is the value of you know, uh, certain stocks, because the, the stock market is insane also, uh, where we have, you know, really, uh, Netflix is 300 bucks, really? <laughs> or 300, I don't remember what the last is, but I mean, it's over $300 uh, for one share of Netflix. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, it's the same thing, Boeing. What's, what's a share of Boeing worth? Uh, what's a share of, anyway, you get the idea, is that the markets are broke, <laughs> they are broken, so uh, in order to uh, uh, function in the world that comes, then maybe you want to have some stocks and bonds, but you also probably want to have some gold and silver, you probably want to have some cash, you want to have some real assets, right, land, uh, you know, that that's productive, um, but also, you know, actual uh, commodities that you can hold in your hands. But see, most of you are in no way, like, what are you going to do with all that rice? <laughs> what are you going to do with all those bushels of corn? Uh, you can't, right? So you have to have that commodities market. Um, but then again, uh, those markets are fudged. So a lot of people, uh, you think you own an ounce of gold. If you have a piece of paper that says you own an ounce of gold, there's probably 100 pieces of paper uh, with that same ounce of gold on it. Uh, so there's a, probably 100 people like you that say they own that same ounce of gold. Which one of you owns it? Are you going to split it up 100 ways? Or does somebody have the superior claim? Or anyway, 
the, the point being is um, things are about to get dicey and interesting. Uh, you, maybe you, may you be born in interesting times. We have been born in interesting times. So have fun with it. Enjoy yourself. This shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be scared. Uh, our ancestors made it through, so will you. Um, and look at it as fun, right? I, my, my boys are playing D&D now. If you go into the dungeon and you win, kill every monster without ever getting hurt and take all the treasure, that's a boring game, right? But when you're down to your last hit point <laughs> and, and you're trying to get a, a potion of healing off the dead body of your druid uh, so that you can keep fighting or at least run away, uh, that's a lot more exciting. Right, and then when you come back and finally kill the dragon or whatever it is and get their treasure, now that's fun, and you right, you've had a good time. But if you, but everything just goes your way, and then on the other hand, if everything goes wrong, that's no fun either. But I mean, the idea being is it's a happy medium. Be happy, right? You're here. This this uh, simulation that you're in, and again, I hate that word because uh, it's pretty solid. This simulation that we're in, but it's a simulation. Um, you're on the whole of that. Um, but the idea being is that. Uh, <sighs> Be of good cheer. Enjoy it. Have a fun time, right? Like I said, you guys are all pissing and moaning and whining about, you know, how terrible things are and you have to escape with marijuana or LSD or whatever it is. Um, if, you're, if you're doing it for escapism, then fuck you. Really, go swim in the ocean naked and go have sex with a beautiful woman or a beautiful man or somebody that, that you're desirous of. And remember that, it, you know, sex feels good and that swimming in the ocean naked is, is one of life's simple pleasures. Um, most of you can't do that because where you are, I tried to swim in the ocean naked in California. <laughs> uh, that was a little too chilly for me. Um, <laughs> can you say shrinkage? Uh, yes, yes, you can. But here in the tropics where the ocean is nice and balmy and pleasant and the, and it's just beautiful on a sunny afternoon like today, um, uh, that is one of the, one of the simple pleasures in life. So anyway, uh, be of good cheer, right? You're here. Have a fun time. Right? Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the show. The American Corporation puts on the best show in the world, but don't let it uh, eat up your mind and eat up your time to the point where you aren't uh, taking care of your own, taking care of your children and making your own money. Because it's a whole lot more fun to hop on a private jet and, and fly around and have a good time than it is to uh, sit in front of your TV uh, angry about the pussy heads or angry about the Trumpers or you know the Red Hats or whatever it is. Right? is. They've got you in the two camps. Uh, one camp hates the pink hats and one hat, the other side hates the red hats. And really now it's come down to clothing. <laughs> oh, come on. Have a good time. All right, Crime Stoppers. I've gone on way too long. I was supposed to quit earlier than this. But anyway, um, be of good cheer. Educate self. Educate others. Uh, I'm sure I'll have links down there eventually. So if you go down there and uh, you look below and there aren't any uh, links, um check back because there'll be more later and uh, hit my patreon just for fun a uh, dollar you won't miss it uh twelve dollars a year if i got a thousand you guys don't i could get some stuff done uh so anyway a dollar a month would be uh, more than helpful there'll be a patreon link down there and uh i'll talk to you guys soon take it easy peace